Hi everyone. Our next topic in terms of arrays is going to be about functions with arrays. And so we're going to think about how we can write functions that handle um, data that's in arrays. And just like everything else, things are going to work a little bit differently. Uh, the main thing to know is that we don't actually pass the array into the function the same way that you would pass an int. So the key point to remember if I could type, is that you pass and return, as we'll see next, uh, pointers, not arrays. So what that means is that our function prototype for all kind of for any array um, parameter, the type will be a pointer type depending on what the array is. So it could be int star or a double star or something like that. Um, and what else does that mean? Well, there's a big, there's an important consequence here, which is that we're not actually copying the array. Just normally when you call a function, you're kind of making a copy of the arguments that you pass in. Well, we, we do that here as well, but you're only making a copy of the pointer itself, like the address. You're not making a copy of the original array. So what that means is that changes to the array in the function affect the original array. So if you remember with normal um, arguments to functions, we have to decide like, okay, normally if we're just passing data into a function, then we you know, might pass it in with type int or double. But if we need to actually change something in the function, then we have to pass in a pointer type in order to let that change be propagated out. So if you remember, that's what we do if we need to like return multiple values from a function, for example. But with arrays, you're always passing a pointer. And so that means you don't have to make that distinction with whether you're changing something in the function or not, because anytime you change uh, an array in a function, it's gonna affect the original one because there is only one array. Uh, all that you're doing when you call a function is passing the address of that original one. And the benefit of this is that calling functions is fast, even on large arrays. So if we had to pass and copy the whole array every time we called a function, that would be really slow because the array might be really big and copying it is gonna take a lot of extra memory and a lot of extra time. And so the, that's the reason why C is kind of designed this way that you don't actually pass the array itself. You generally want to pass a pointer instead. Um, and so we have to be a little bit more careful in how we write functions because the changes in the function will change the original array. But it has the advantages that it's always going to be uh, very efficient and calling a function, the time to call that function, um, at least to start the function call, won't depend on the size of the array. And so let's take a look at an example to see this in practice. Here's a small program. What it does is just have two different arrays. One is uh, allocated in this way. So this is a stack based array. And the second one is allocated using calyx, so that's a heap-based. And in both cases, so for A1, the elements are just set in the program like this, so it's always going to be size 4, always going to have those four numbers. And for array 2, it's going to be dependent on whatever somebody types in. But for both cases, we can call the same function, print r, that's going to uh, print out that array. And what I... We're not going to look at the definition of this just yet, but what we want to think about is the prototype of this function. And so here you can see it takes in three parameters, uh, the name, which is itself an array. Notice that because strings are arrays of chars, that's what we're passing here. And so the type that we're using, because remember, for all kinds of functions, we if we want that function to take an array, then we pass in a pointer. So this is going to be a char star that we pass in. That means that's passing in the pointer to the beginning of that string. Um, similarly, with the data itself, that's going to be passed in as an int star. And then very importantly, 
and I'll reemphasize this point in a minute, but for any normal array that's not a string, we generally also have to pass the size into the function. Because remember, the, just the array itself or just the pointer itself doesn't say anything about how large that array is. But if the function needs to know how big it is, then it has to have some way of finding that out. With a string, it finds that out because of the location of the null byte. But with a normal array, um, when we're not using some kind of special value to indicate the end of it, then we have to also pass the size in like that. So let's see this function, this, this program in action, and then we'll come back and look at the definition. So I think I called this fun. And so there's the first array. It's just printing out the contents, 10, 15, 20, 30, just like we saw right there. Um, because, and, and it's also printing out this string A1 at the beginning. We could put, we could have put anything there. So the print array function was doing all, print out that entire line. And now it's asking us how many elements we want in the second array. Let's have six. And I'll just put some random numbers in here. And there we go. So it prints out the name of the second array and the elements in there. So now think about how you would write this function. You see that it needs to print out the first name, then a colon and a space, and then print out the array contents in between square brackets. And I intentionally made it like this to make it a little bit trickier. So you might, if you, if you want, if you have time, you can pause the video and see if you could try to write this function yourself. But if you don't have time, or if you did just pause, then let's take a look at how it actually works. So here's our function called print r to print the array with a name. So first it prints out the name, colon, space, and the opening square bracket. And then I uh, have to have a special case here for the first element. And the reason is whenever we have this kind of thing where we're printing out array contents, what you're always looking for is, okay, this is all the elements of the array with spaces in between them. So that means that you're gonna want to have some kind of loop where you print out a space and you print out an array element. And there's always a choice like, do I print the array element and then the space after it? And then you kind of group things like this, like eight space, two space, three space, five space, nine space. But then when you get to the last one, you notice that that can't have a space after it. So you're like, uh-oh. Then you say, maybe I would print this with the space before it. And that works everywhere to print the space before, except at the first element, there's no space before the first one. And so this happens a lot of times, like if you were printing a list with commas in between or something like that. And so what you usually wanna do is just treat the first one separately, print out the first one by itself outside of the loop, and then have the loop go through all the other ones. And in this case, it's gonna print a space before. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just printing out the first element if it exists and then having a loop, but notice this loop starts at one, doesn't start at zero, and for all the rest of them, I print a space and then that one, and then finish off with this closing square bracket. And again, in terms of how uh, functions work, this is just receiving these two arrays as pointers, and then it also uh, needs to know the size of the data array. And and so that's how it's, it's working. Um, and again, also notice that we can just use the normal array syntax, even though it has this pointer type, um, you can treat it as any other array with the square brackets. And the final thing to point out here is that uh, whether it's a stack-based array or a heap-based array, so these are declared very differently in the program, A1 and A2, but we call our function exactly the same. So the function doesn't care whether that array was allocated on the stack or on the heap. The function just gets the pointer and hopefully the size somehow, and then deals with that array as it exists. So let's recap some of those uh, points to remember. So tips on array functions. You always need to know the size. So for strings, the, the length is implied by the null byte, right? Remember, strings always have to have that null byte, and that's what tells anything what that length is going to be. So that's why all the standard string functions, you don't have to take an extra parameter for, like, what's the length of that string, because it's kind of built into the representation itself. But, of course, you need to make sure the null byte is there. Um, for other normal arrays you will usually need another parameter. Usually need another parameter 
for the size. And of course, if you have a function that takes in multiple arrays, then you might need multiple parameters for the two different sizes, um, unless you know that they're always going to be the same size or something like that. And then uh, just to emphasize, you can treat them as any other array. You can use square brackets to get uh, array elements, for example, once you're inside that function. Okay, I want to do one more thing with this example program, which is to not <laughs> something that's going to be too mind blowing, but just, just add one more function, which is going to add one to every element in the array. So this is going to be a void function. A lot of times array functions are void functions because um, they're just acting on the array itself. Not always, as we'll see. Uh, so this is going to take in an array of ints of a given size. And what is it going to do is it's going to add one to everything in the data array. And again, I encourage you to pause and see if you could try to write this function yourself. Pausing. You really pause, right? OK, good. Now let's see how it actually works. Let's see one way that you could write this. Copy the prototype. And what are we going to do is just our standard loop. Again, we don't have to use the letter i here, but that's just what we end up using like for index quite frequently in programs. And for each element of the array, we're going to add one. So we could say equals data i plus one, that would work. But we can also use these other syntaxes that we know about. So we can say like plus equals one, that also works, uh, the um, add and assign. And we can also do the very short um, like data i plus plus. Because remember data i, you can treat that now like any other int variable. Um, and because technically the square brackets is a separate operator, but it's an operator with a very, very high precedence. Um, so things like this actually work the way you would expect them to. And so if we do this, we can call add one, like to add one to everything in A2. We would say add one A2 and A2 size. Of course, we have to even though this this is a very simple array function, it has to have two parameters because we almost always need to pass the pointer as well as the size of the array. And then uh, let's print it again. And I can put anything in this first string for print array. So I'll say a2 um, plus 1. And it's the same array. And we didn't actually make any copy of this array or anything. So it was the change that we make to this array in the add1 function are reflected back in the original program. So this is modifying that existing array. OK, let's just see this in action, make sure it worked. And it did not work. <laughs> Somehow I wrote the word int instead of for. Great, A little brain fart there. I just want to emphasize, um, in case it's not obvious, I could edit out those actual mistakes I'm making in compiling things for these programs. And I'm not because I want to make sure it's clear to all of you that even though I have a lot of experience writing C programs, I still make little mistakes as I write them myself. So this is to make you feel better about if you make small mistakes when you write your own programs, um, don't beat yourself up about it but also to encourage you that it's going to be something that's with you. And so it's about your ability uh, as a programmer to adapt to making those small mistakes and to find out and to debug and to figure out how to fix uh, and recover from those mistakes. That's what you should hope to get better at. Uh, so yeah, so this worked. It added one to everything in the array. And that's uh, so that's an example of a function that actually modifies the contents of the original array. Um, this print array function doesn't modify the contents. It's just printing things out. But notice that the way that we write the parameters is exactly the same. Um, so unlike with you know, normal ints or single uh, values that we're passing into a function, with functions that handle arrays, they always have the ability to modify the original data. And it's just you have to know what the function is doing to know whether it's actually modifying those things or not.